Guys, so today's video is on tinted sunscreens, why dermatologists like using them, and in some cases, why tinted sunscreens are the best sunscreen for you. So let's get into it. What are tinted sunscreens? So basically sunscreens that have color with it. And why is color very important apart from the match? So you can have a color match, which means there's less sheen, there's better integration with your skin color. So they can be more cosmetically elegant. In other words, nicer to use, nicer to blend in, and not as obvious. So certainly the cosmetic side of things, but importantly, from a dermatological point of view, tinted sunscreens are essential part of treating uh, conditions such as pigmentation, especially in darker skin types. And I'll give you some reasons. So let's take a little step back and understand what sunscreens are. You have sunscreens, which are uh, basically physical sunscreens. So they include things like titanium dioxide as well as zinc oxide. Then you have chemical sunscreens, and it's a whole heap of different chemicals, including things like uh, avabenzone, parcel, a whole heap of um, chemicals. And then you have sunscreen, which are hybrid, which is basically uh, physical together with chemical sunscreens, and they hybrid that in. Now, when it comes to sunscreens, they are measured, in Australia at least, with UVB ratings and UVA ratings. Most sunscreens go by the UVB rating, so when you look at the sunscreen, you go SPF 4, which is pretty dismal, you know that um, it gives you four times the time out in the sun before you burn. So it protects against UVB, B is for burn. So an SPF 50, in theory, should be able to get you uh, into the sun and protect you for 50 times more than the actual burn time. It doesn't usually work that way because when people use sunscreens, they use it at a much lower concentration or much lower dose or amount. So all of these UV ratings are based upon people using uh, two milligrams per centimeter squared. Basically for your face and neck, this equates to five mils. So when you're doing quick calculations, if you're using five mils twice a day, which you should, ideally that's 10 mils of sunscreen gone. So you buy yourself a bottle, which is about 50 mils, <laughs> And it's quite ridiculous, but you should go through that in about five days to seven days. No one does it, we understand that. And if you don't, it takes you three weeks. Your SPF is not 50, it's 50 divided by three. So in all, your SPF is actually around 15 to 17 um, during that time of application. So that's why dermatologists actually um, recommend a UV rating or an SPF rating that's way, way, way higher. It's not because of the sunscreen itself, it's because patients or, or consumers fail to comply, which I can understand, uh, using the recommended dose. So that's the main reason. Now, with even good sunscreens, right, so even really high-tech uh, chemical sunscreens, they do protect UVB, that's kind of easy to do, but they also protect against UVA. And most of them actually protect against a lot of UVA, at least 70% of UVA wavelength, but fail short of HEV, which is a high energy visible, and that includes your blue light, etc. Now, why is this important, and why am I so interested in this? It's because of this. As a dermatologist, I see lots and lots of skin pigmentation problems, and a lot of these include things like melasma and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. In the context of melasma pigment, this is important to understand. Your action spectrum, in other words, the spectrum of light, but not only light, there's not only UVB, UVA, but visible light and even extends to the infrared, they all can stimulate your melanocytes to produce pigment. And hence patients with melasma struggle to find a sunscreen that's effective because UVB, UVA, some of UVA's attenuated, all of UV, the UVB's attenuated, and even if you're using the right amount and the right frequency, in most of these cases, the visible side of the spectrum is not treated at all. And this is where sunscreens that contain iron oxides or tint come in handy. So these basically reflect light and hence the actual amount of visible light that goes through is less. At this moment in time, there is no universal or even global way of describing how much HEV or how much visible light attenuation we get from the sunscreens. Right now, I recommend a handful of sunscreens, you can find them in the description below, that I think are great for melasma patients. Now, when we extend this same protocol to patients with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and one of the most common causes of PIH is, of course, acne. So when we extend that to acne patients, it's the same thing. We want to actually protect them against UVB, easy, UVA, kind of easy, but challenging, and then visible. And unless you have tinted sunscreens, you've got no hope with visible. Now, that what happens in darker skin types is very important. So when you're looking at skin type three and higher, they have receptors on your melanocytes, right? In other words, your pigment cells, they have receptors there, 
which are very susceptible to blue light activation. So in other words, you're high energy visible. So when these wavelengths hit your melanocyte, your melanocyte starts producing more pigment. And hence, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is super hard to treat, especially if you've got darker skin types. So guys, here's my recommendations. If you've got melasma, use tinted sunscreen. If you are ethnic in origin, so we're talking about Asians, Mediterraneans, um, African Americans, South Americans, if you have ethnicity in you, try your best to get a tinted sunscreen that matches your color. I hope you liked that video. It's a very important one. It just summarizes the use of tinted sunscreens and it will be many years before we come up with the standards that's regulated, I guess, throughout the world so we can understand what amount of HEV is protected by each sunscreen. Guys, please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you shortly. Bye for now.